Good morning and welcome to Live in a Greenhouse on YouTube. If you're new here, this channel is about my journey to design, build, and then live in the first greenhouse enclosed tiny home in the United States. Being the last weekend of the month, today is the March walk around. Whether this month has been volatile, like today, this morning it was bright and sunny, but not too much later, it looks like it's going to rain. Overnight lows this month are in the low 40s and daytime highs are in the low to mid 60s. But there are enough partially sunny days to raise the greenhouse temperature 15 to almost 20 degrees warmer inside than it is outside. This volatile spring weather is a perfect example of why I wanted to live inside a greenhouse. When it's raining outside, I can still go play in the garden or just sit in my rocker and listen to the rain on the roof. But when it's sunny outside, I can already have the doors and windows open, which is months ahead of when I would be able to do that in a standard house. Months like March is when I really love living here and can honestly say it's as great as I imagined over the years of the planning and construction. So if you enjoy this content, please like, comment, and subscribe. So YouTube will show it to more viewers and come along today because spring planting has begun in the greenhouse. Not enough progress yet to be noticeable, but I've started to chip the branches on this side of the driveway and clean up under the trees. I've never eaten nettles. Are these too old to use? Brought in another yard of garden soil that I'm almost done moving. Once the truck is empty again, the next load is straw for mulch. Move more dirt to finish covering the ramp garden Overwintered some black mondo grass. I'm not sure where I want to move it to. Spread a bunch of wildflower seed on the drain field, but nothing to see yet. And planted a couple store bought flowers and one pot of columbine that I started from seed last year. Notice this columbine outside is still only a couple inches tall, basically the same size that I transplanted it a few weeks ago. The trees around my property put off a lot of this yellowish pollen. I'll give the rampant stairs a good spring cleaning in a couple weeks when the main pollen attack has passed. Wildflowers are really starting to grow. I use rainwater for inside the greenhouse and around the yard. Washing the trailer's deck will have to wait until after the pool is full. This is one of my little plant nursery areas, but it looks like the deer trimmed some of them. These daffodils were on my property when I purchased it, and I moved them out of the way of the construction. I'd never seen them bloom before, and I'm so happy to see they're white. moved a lot of horse manure to the greenhouse beds. The rest of this pile will probably go to the ramp garden. 
Nothing happening at either cap in this month while well, I focused on the greenhouse. Hopefully I can get back to these in April or May. Getting warm enough to get out the pressure washer and take care of this bird poop. Since it's so easy to roll the chipper out of the greenhouse to this corner, I've also been chipping away at this pile. So far I'm really pleased with the size and consistency of the chips from the little Sun Joe I bought last year. Not sponsored. I started to refill the pool this month that drained the tanks down to about one-third full. Normally the rain around here is light and drizzly, but the other day we got an absolute downpour that only added about 600 gallons for a total of about 3,000 gallons until the next rain. Been picking away at spring cleaning tasks like washing the house windows inside and out, washing the greenhouse walls, and wash the bottom of the pool. I'd hoped the key lime would recover from the freeze, but it's dead dead. Time to pull it out. I think this volunteer is a sunflower from last year. The lotus has started to sprout. It needs fertilizer and to be back in the pool. Looks like slight swelling on the calamondin and is still green so I still have hope it'll recover. The peach tree continues to be the star of the food garden, totally covered in flowers and leafing out nicely. Started to refill the pool last week, but it's a long process since I want to stop and hold for a few days at certain depths to check for leaks and to let the rainwater tanks refill. Turned under the cover crop, and have been bringing in loads of manure and better quality soil, but not quite finished. These strawberries were decimated by powdery mildew last year. They've responded well to the potassium bicarbonate and even have a couple flowers. Potatoes recovered from the freeze. These super sugar snap peas were started in pots on March 3rd and transplanted here a few days ago with super sprint direct sown between them. Filled both raised beds with a mix of manure and garden mix soil, but I'm changing from drip irrigation to soaker hoses in the raised beds, so haven't planted them while I gather the parts needed to convert from half inch to three eighths pipe systems. I'll get that done over the next week or two. The olive is recovering nicely from being transplanted. I think these are volunteer spinach, so waiting for another set of leaves before pulling them. This is where I've been using the chips from the Sun Joe. cleared off enough of the potting bench to start seeds on March 3rd on heating mats. Some of these seeds can be direct sown, but the beds wouldn't be ready before the time they should be direct sown, so I started them here for transplant in April. So far everything has sprouted except mini white cukes and parsley. One of this year's experiments is asparagus from seed. I've started asparagus beds from crowns before, but this is the first time trying seed. If you've had success with asparagus from seed, let me know your tips and tricks in the comments. Soon ready to transplant our three kinds of tomato, two cucumbers, leeks, lemon balm, lavage, two kinds of basil, calendula, oregano, white sage, and bunching onions. Lots more herbs, flowers, and vegetables will be direct sown in April. Lots of new growth on the carrots. These were direct sown in a purple raised bed last year. Even though I did get some tasty baby carrots, they mostly failed to thrive. But I couldn't bear to compost them when I emptied that bed, so I moved them here for temporary holding while bringing in new dirt. This section has been the focus of ornamentals because I look at this while working at my day job. 
I found these great hyacinth bulbs shriveled up on the ground after the excavation. They wintered over under the peach tree to see if they'd recover. And they did! These columbine were started from seed last year at the same time as those at the ramp garden. One last pot to plant. Deep-rooted carnations are coming on nicely. The primroses were on the half-price shelf at the store due to a few flowers past their prime. A few survivors from a wildflower mix I tossed out last year. A few flowers my neighbor let me take from her yard that I don't know what they're called. If you know, please tell me in the comments. Finally got the last border board planted and filled with manure and dirt and ready for planting. Also, portulaca, godicia, zinnias, and coneflowers started mid-March. More of the recovered carnations, but I'll have to wait for them to bloom to remember which is the pink and which is the yellow. Planted this mint a couple years ago, but it got hammered by the trifecta of powdery mildew, freezing, and pests. Got the gnats early this year with neem and sprayed with potassium bicarbonate and is recovering nicely. Augmented these beds with manure and better soil, and some of the survivors, like these violets, are happy about it. The frogs like to sit in the leaves among these pink flowers and surprise me by jumping out when I water. Got the irrigation lines extended on both raised beds and adjusted other sections, so I'm ready to plant up these beds. With the ridge vents open, there's plenty of pollinators who can come inside including bees. Some of the herbs started at the potting bench will go here. Also, some other herbs and flowers I'll direct seed next week. Turn the bench to face the walkway so it's a convenient place to put on my shoes. Spent a few evenings sifting stones out of the sand to fill the gabion basket, and this one's almost done. Need more wood chips to cover the sand until I'm ready to bring in dirt to fill around the pond and north side of the pool. That'll probably be next year. Not much change, but it's almost time to switch to the warm weather decor. Attended an intro to permaculture by Jesse Bloom this month. Working my way through the book now. 44 degrees outside, but at only 945, it's already 60 degrees in the greenhouse. Switched to the spring towels and brought in a small pot of mint for the windowsill. Switched to the spring towels here too. New growth on the orchid, but it looks like the lemon is also dead dead. The greenhouse shade curtains have been washed and hanging to dry. All the house plants are happy for spring, especially the night blooming cereus that can go outside during the day. And there you have it. Spring has sprung, and with all the doors open to the greenhouse, I get to work at the computer like I'm outdoors, 
but without the glare on the monitor. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share with your friends, and come back next time as the food and ornamental gardens get planted up.